Hi class, welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to be talking about volume of prisms and cylinders. So let's just review really quick the difference between surface area and volume. So if you take surface area of the can, the surface area is going to be the material that makes up the can itself, like the metal all the way around the can, or if you have a box, it's going to be the cardboard that makes up the box. Um, another way to think about it is if I took that container and dumped it in a can of paint, what part would be covering paint? It'd be all the outside pieces. That's the surface area. Now, the volume of a container is going to be the capacity of that container. So how much can it hold inside? If I fill it with sand or fill it with water, how much is that going to be? So that's the difference conceptually between surface area and volume. All right, so let's look at a couple formulas. We have volume of a box or prism. Now, the prism could look different, and we'll look at a couple examples. So instead of just doing length times width times height, which would be what it would be for a, a rectangular box. We're going to use B. Capital B is going to represent uh, the area of the base because in a prism, we don't really know exactly what uh, shape our base is going to be. So the volume of a prism is going to be the area of the base times the height. If we want to think about a, um, like a box, think about how much material would it take to cover the bottom of the box, the area of the base, and then just fill it all the way up to the top, times it or multiply it by the height. All right, so that's the formula, nice, short, and sweet. Uh, volume of a cylinder is exactly the same because a cylinder is a prism but with a circular base. So let's get a little more specific. What is the area of the base of a cylinder? Well, the area of a circle is pi r squared. And so that's going to be pi r squared times height, but it's the same formula, which is nice. If you just remember volume is area of the base times the height for these two shapes, you're pretty good to go. All right, so let's look at example A. We're going to find the volume, and they want us to give us exact answers, which means we're not going to use our calculators or approximate anything. We're not going to round any decimals. All right, so the first one, we want to find area of the base. So my base in this prism is going to be, um, technically it could have been any, any two sides that are parallel and congruent to each other. I like to choose top and bottom for a rectangular prism. So the area of my base is going to be 5 times 3, and the height is 4. We multiply all of those together, and we get 60 centimeters. Now for volume, my units end up as centimeters cubed. I have centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. When we multiply them together, we end up with centimeters cubed. All right, now look at the second example. This is what we call a trapezoidal prism because the bases are trapezoids. And if you notice, the bases are not the top and bottom. You really have to look for which shapes are congruent and parallel to each other. And the only two shapes that are congruent and parallel to each other are the two trapezoids. We have this one here and this one in the back. So those are the two bases. So when we want to find area of the base, we need to think about area of a trapezoid. And if you don't remember that formula, you can always go look back at one of my previous lessons. So area of our trapezoid is going to be base 1, which in this case is 8, plus base 2, which is 6, divided by 2. So average the two bases times the height of the trapezoid, which is 10. That's going to give us the area of our base. Now we want to multiply that times the height of the prism. And now this is where it gets a little tricky. A lot of students want to use 10 as the height because that's how tall it is when it's standing as shown. But the height of a prism is the length between the two bases. So if the trapezoids are the bases, then four is going to be our height of the prism. It's the length between the two bases. And that's probably the trickiest part of these types of problems. All right, so we've got 14 divided by 2 is 7 times 10 times 4 is 280. And then, oh, I wasn't given any units. So in this case, I would just use the word units and do units cubed because they didn't specify what units they wanted me to use. 
All right, let's look at our cylinder. So again, it's just area of the base times the height, and area of the base of a cylinder is pi r squared. So I have diameter and the height. I need radius, which is going to be half of my diameter, and then I can use my formula. We have pi times radius squared times the height, which is 2.5, and they wanted exact answers. So you're not going to use your calculator to multiply by pi. You're going to take 5 squared, which is 25, multiply that by 2.5. Let me just double check my notes here. And we get 62.5 and then leave pi in your answer. And then we have our units, centimeters cubed for volume. So remember exact answer, we wanna leave pi right there. We don't wanna use our calculators to approximate. All right, uh, the next one, find the radius of a cylinder if the volume is 18.75, just erase my marker there, and the height is three. So remember, volume is pi r squared times the height, area of the base times the height. I know my volume is 18.75 pi equals pi times my radius squared, which I don't know, times the height of three. So let's solve for radius. First, we can divide by three pi. I'm gonna divide both sides by three pi to get r squared by itself. When I do that, I end up with 6.25. The pi's cancel out, which is nice. And then 18.75 divided by three, we've got. And then I find the square root of 6.25, which is going to be 2.5. And I'm just doing radius, so my units are just basic centimeters. And there we go. Now, technically negative 2.5 is squared is also 6.25, but in reality, in, in the real world, uh, we can't have a negative radius. So we just wanna focus on the positives. All right, last example. We have find the volume of a cylinder if the surface area is 360 pi and the radius is 12. So now we have to review our surface area of a cylinder formula. So if you don't remember or you haven't learned it yet, it is in my last couple videos. You can go back and look. Surface area of our cylinder is going to be, because there's two circles, two times the area of the base, so two pi r squared, plus the perimeter of the base, which is circumference, two pi r times the height. All right, now if you notice, I have the surface area of 360 pi, and I know my radius, two pi times 12 squared plus two pi times 12 times h. So what this information is going to give us is we can find h, which is good because if I want the volume, I need area of the base times the height or pi r squared and h. I have r, but I don't have h yet. All right, so let's solve this guy. We've got 360 pi equals 144 times two is 288 pi plus 24 pi times h. So let's move over anything that doesn't have an h. We're gonna subtract 288 pi. And 360 minus 288, 72 pi equals 24 pi h. Divide to get h by itself. And h is going to be three. All right, well that worked out nicely. Now my volume is pi times r squared times three, my height, which is 144 times three, which is 432 pi. And my units were centimeters and it's volume, so we cube it. All right, and that concludes our lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching and remember, math is fundamental.